You know, for every video game company that tries to make fun immersive experiences, there's always another that makes lousy cash-ins that try to squeeze every last penny out of consumers. So today, I'll share with you my personal list of the top 5 worst video game companies. I really debated if I wanted to put Rare on this list, but in my opinion, it really is the 5th worst company in gaming when you look at just how far they have fallen. Back in the early 2000s, Microsoft paid a nice chunk of money to acquire Rare from Nintendo, but a good portion of the price was for all the IPs such as Conquer, Banjo, and Killer Instinct. So one could argue that it was worth the investment, until you look at how little they've taken advantage of those properties. Over the past 10 years, Rare has not made a true sequel to Banjo-Tooie, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, or Battletoads. Here's a little idea I've come up with Microsoft. If you spend the money to buy the rights to popular game franchises, you should use them. Instead, Microsoft has Rare working on projects such as Kinect Sports. This truly baffles me because they could have gotten any game studio to make a Wii Sport ripoff for the Kinect, but they had Rare do it. At the end of the day, the reason Rare is the way it is comes down to the fact that Microsoft wasn't able to keep the talent at Rare after they bought them, and they seem to be out of touch with all the gamers that have been begging for a new Banjo game that's not of the nuts and bolts variety. What kind of list would it be if I didn't include the original Bad Game Company? With their infamous rainbow logo plastered on all their NES cartridges, LJN back in the late 80s and early 90s put out some of the worst games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. LJN realized that even if a game was bad, it would sell as long as they had a good IP to go along with it. With the rights to make a game based off Karate Kid, Spider-Man, and Jaws, their lousy games based on popular franchises made for a lot of unhappy children. With the angry video game nerd having an ongoing joke about playing LJN games, it's no surprise that they're the most well-known bad video game company from back in the day, which makes me give it my number 4 spot. Even though there are a lot of bad game companies out there with shady business practices, I can at least say they're good at being bad, but Capcom takes the cake for doing some of the stupidest stunts that have backfired in their face. First off, we have Mega Man, Capcom's most valuable IP, or at least I thought it was. Starting its life on the NES, the Mega Man franchise has dozens of games under its belt that have helped put Capcom where they are today, but Capcom doesn't see it that way since they cancelled the last four games in development. As if the cancelled games weren't a big enough letdown for gamers, on one occasion Capcom blamed the fans for one of the Mega Man games' cancellation. Now in what universe did they think that blaming the people who buy their products for a game's cancellation would end well? If you don't think that was bad enough, Capcom also practices the technique of creating content that is ready for a game's release, but rather than including it with the game, they sell it as DLC for an additional cost. But that's not even the bad part. At some point, Capcom felt that they were losing money by having to let people download the content for an additional price, so for Resident Evil 6, they decided to put the content directly on the disc and still charge extra for it. I know a lot of companies have day one DLC, but Capcom became so blatant about it that they put it directly on the disc to make a few extra pennies, as if gamers were too dumb to notice. Capcom, why do you do such stupid things? I know every single one of you saw this coming from a mile away, and here it is. I think EA is the second worst company in gaming. This comes to no surprise since EA has been voted the worst company in America two years in a row by consumerist annual poll. Yet they still don't seem to get it, so let me try to explain why gamers hate them. Well first of all, when you have a hit game series on your hands, the logical thing to do is take your time with the sequel so it adds features to further the experience, but EA is known to take the approach of making sequels that are a downgrade from the original. Take for example Mass Effect 3. We all know the story of how gamers were promised a satisfying ending to the trilogy, but instead were given a rushed product because supposedly EA wasn't willing to give the developers more time. 
EA has also been known to monopolize the sports game market by getting exclusive rights to sports teams, which let them have no competition when making FIFA or Madden games. With their shady business practices and many techniques to get every last penny out of consumers, EA is easily the second worst company in gaming. But they're not the worst. Here it is, I think Zynga is the worst of the worst in the game industry. Now of course the most obvious reason being that they make mindless uninspired addictive games that are meant to nickel and dime the consumer through microtransactions, but that's not why they're at my number one spot. Back in 2011, a small group of three guys created a game called Tiny Towers for the iPhone. The game was a huge success putting the small indie developers on the map. Let's now move forward a year when Zynga created a game called Dream Heights, which completely ripped off Tiny Towers gameplay. I can't possibly see why a company with thousands of employees can't come up with their own ideas. I could understand if they took the concept of Tiny Towers and did something unique with it, but rather they made their game identical to it with the main difference being a new coat of paint. While I don't like it when game developers make lousy games at day one DLC and cancel projects, none of that compares to a multi-billion dollar company that directly steals games from any developers. And that's why Zynga is the worst company in the industry. So that was my personal list of the top 5 worst video game companies, and if you have your own, please feel free to leave your list in the comments below. So thanks for watching.